Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new around here, this is not the kind of thing that we normally do. I normally like to do the easiest or best way to do things in DaVinci Resolve, but I was looking around in my analytics over the last few days and I found that 95% of my viewers are not subscribed. So I thought maybe I'd switch it up. If we do the opposite kind of content, opposite kind of subs maybe. There will still be some learning to be done from today's video because a lot of the techniques and tools that we're going to be using are going to be helpful for you in the future and since we got a viewer request a couple days ago if you stick around until the end of the video I'm going to be showing you how to use a regular mask and actually track that onto something so that you can show another layer of video through your top layer of video. So without any further ado let's jump into making the hardest most inefficient mask possible inside of DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna be getting started today inside of Fusion because that's where pretty much everything today is gonna to happen. We're using this clip of me riding my longboard. We're gonna get started with this horrible mask and we're just gonna cover up one of these wheels. Add a little bit of suspense to the shot. Does he have two wheels? Is it just one? Let's see. So we're gonna take our media in number one and we're gonna move that to an image plane. If you look right here, we have an image plane. And this little section of this bigger toolbar here is all dedicated to 3D tools. You'll probably find in today's video that I'm going to do a lot of explaining and maybe over explaining for some people, but for a lot of people, Fusion is kind of a scary place that they don't want to spend any time inside of Resolve. And this might seem super complex for a lot of people. And I want to make sure that everybody's able to do this by the end, because the skills that we're picking up today are actually pretty important for other projects that you will probably need to do. The Image Plane 3D is going to make a flat, like a movie screen, basically, but in 3D space. So if I put this in viewer number one, you can see what I'm talking about here. It's just a flat version of our image standing upright in a 3D space. Now if we take that and we add a camera to it right here in that same little toolbar, and then we click on our camera. Since we have our camera 3D clicked on down here, it's not in the viewer. You see neither of those dots are lit up and our image plane is in viewer number one. So what we're gonna do is finish our chain right here. So the only thing that we need to bring this merge 3D back into something that we actually view inside of our viewer is a renderer 3D. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on renderer 3D in that same little toolbar, or you can hit shift space and search for any of the things that I'm talking about that I get from this toolbar or anywhere else. And now we're gonna take this render 3D output and we're gonna put that into our media out, but we need to break this chain first. So we'll go ahead and drop that in there. And now what we see is whatever this camera sees. And if you're making videos, I would assume you know that a camera sees out of this part right here. So what do we need to do? We need to grab this blue arrow or come up to our camera 3D transform controls up here and we need to adjust its position. So as we move it back, we're right up next to the wood on that longboard, so we're able to see only that. And as we move back further, we're able to see more and more and more. So it looks like most of our image is in the frame now. You can see how these lines are lining up with those corners. And the way that I'm rotating to look around like this is by holding left shift and right click and maneuvering like this. So other controls that you're gonna need to be comfortable moving around in this 3D space that we're using today are control and the scroll wheel. That's gonna be to zoom in and out. And left shift and the scroll wheel is gonna help us to rotate around up and down around this. To move around like this, just on one plane, you just middle mouse click and drag around. If we need to rotate our camera for any reason, switch that control right here. Again, this is the most inefficient, the worst way to do this. Don't do it this way unless you're trying to practice building other skills. We're gonna put something in between this camera and this image plane in order to block whatever it is on the image plane. And if we need to track that, we're just going to keyframe position so that it moves around in between here, blocks the vision that's going to our longboard from this camera. How are we going to do that though? We're going to take both of these, move them over here, click on our image plane node, and make another merge 3D. The first one was auto-created, but again, it's just right up here in the same toolbar. And with this merge 3D, we're going to add a shape 3D. And it's going to destroy that at first, but we're just going to switch our shape right here from plane we're gonna go cone so that I can show you guys something cool. Go to the transform controls on this cone now. We're gonna rotate it on its X axis 90 degrees so that the point is facing us. And if we wanna see this, we can put that in our viewer number one. You can see that the point is going right toward where that camera is. And we're blocking our whole image plane. So we're gonna take our shape, still in our transform controls here. And we're gonna take our scale and we're just gonna hold control and drag that down. So when you hold control while you move any of these sliders in Fusion, you get a lot more precise control. Whereas if you don't hold it, it moves a lot faster. 
So we're just gonna bring that right down just like that. So now we're gonna check where our image plane is in relation to our shape. So we'll put them alternately in number one, okay. So it looks like our shape has some pass through on our image plane. So now we have our basic tool that we're gonna be using for this mask in this cone right here. We can adjust the shape by moving it back and forth so it goes deeper or shallower through our image plane. But we only need it to be big enough to cover this wheel because that's what we're trying to do here. So we're gonna move it over the wheel. And then since this is a trash way of doing things, I'm gonna come over here to our materials controls out of our shape 3D panel here. And just go ahead and click somewhere in the green. And I'm picking green on purpose because I don't see a lot of green in this image. So I'm gonna hit okay. And now we have a very bright green circle. And what we're doing here is we're gonna take our cone and we're gonna keyframe its position so that it stays on top of that wheel. So here we are frame one. We're gonna take our shape 3D, go into transform controls now, and we're just gonna keyframe all three of these. And then we're gonna go forward, say 10 frames, maybe a little bit more and we're gonna move that so that it stays on that wheel. And I won't make you guys watch all of this, it's just the same thing over and over. Keep those keyframes going, move it back and forth. Okay, so I went almost to the end here. We're just gonna be working with the beginning, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And now we have our green dot, and it should kind of stick to that wheel or pretty close. I mean, I. I went in huge chunks of frames, so it's drifting quite a lot, but the idea is there. And when we do this the right way later, it's gonna automatically track. You won't have to go through frame by frame. It's gonna be very nice. And now is where it becomes important that that's green. What we're gonna do is open up our ultra gear, just like that. And we're gonna select this green color as our keying color. And now you can see, you can just see right through that. So if we go back to the beginning, there's a hole in our footage that moves everywhere that cone was supposed to move. We can change the size and the position by moving the cone around in relation to the camera and the image plane. So now on the edit page, we can see that we do indeed have a mask that shows through this top layer to this bottom layer and allows you to move that mask around while the footage is going. So hopefully you guys learned something about moving in 3D space today, how to use shapes in 3D space in relation to image planes and things you can do with that. So something cool you can do with this now that you have these skills is you can actually pull this right through the image plane and then through the camera and it makes a pretty cool little transition. It's like a circle wipe, but it's more of a ripple. So you can see our center of the circle is up in the top left right now. So that opens from right there. Then you had a cut in between there. You'd have a very nice wipe transition super easily. Okay, so how to track for real a good mask. So we're gonna go ahead and really do this. We're gonna grab a planar tracker. And again, to pull this up, we're using shift spacebar. And now that that's between those, because I had this selected when I added it, if you didn't and it just pops up somewhere, you can go ahead and drag it while holding shift and wait until that line highlights. And then you can just drop it right in that line and it will be attached. So what we're gonna do for this is change our tracker from point to hybrid point area. And then aside from our tracker, we're also going to be changing our motion type. So we have all of these options in here. Translation is just going to do left, right, up, down on the plane. Translation rotation is going to do left, right, up, down, and rotation like this. Translation, rotation, and scale is gonna go left, right, up, down, and size. So it'll adjust that automatically. This is just gonna add shear to that where this way is covered as well. And then perspective gets all kinds of funky and just tries to superhero track it. And I never use it because it always makes my footage warpy and gross. And I, I don't ever get clean tracks with it. I'm not sure why, but we're gonna be going with translation, rotation, and scale today because it normally works pretty well. Our output is gonna be background and our track channel, I'm going to leave as Luma for this one because there's a lot of Luma contrast there and that's just light, so like light to dark but you can change your track channel to any of these. You just need to figure out which one is going to give you the best result and you can try multiple if you need to. So now we're gonna draw our trackable area and we're gonna zoom in by holding control and using that scroll wheel. And then we're gonna scroll up and down to move around like that or you can middle mouse click and drag around like that. We are gonna draw a loose mask around this wheel. And this isn't really a mask, it's just pen tool so that we can define the area that we want to track and we will hit set up here because it was at reference time zero and we are at frame 118 right here. So if you try to do that, it won't work. It'll just say, hey, there's an error. You need to be at your reference time in order to start. And then if you need to get back to it, you just press go and it will snap you right back to this first reference frame. So we're gonna zoom out 
so that we can see what it's doing. And then I'll hit play right here, this little play button with the arrow going all the way. This one will track one frame forward. This one will track to the end. This one will stop the track. This one will track one frame backward. This one will go all the way backward. So we'll go all the way to the end here, give it a second, and it will start to move around. It'll play through. You'll be able to see the tracking dots just like that. It looks like this one kept up pretty well until my red shoe came in. My leg, actually. They're the same luminance level for a second there, so it latches on. You just tweak that as you need. If you have a lot of tracking related issues, I have a video, a whole video, about troubleshooting your tracks if you're getting a bad one and how you can work to fix that. But for right now, we're just going to take that planar tracker and right here we're going to click on create planar transform and now that we have this planar transform i've deleted the tracker out of our node web here just by selecting it pressing backspace we're going to take this planar tracker and we're going to apply it to a mask so i'm going to take our polygon mask tool right here and i'm going to invert it so that we can actually see what we're doing and then i'm going to draw this wheel and I'm just uh, tutorializing you guys, so I'm not going to be super careful I'm out here showing methods. So now that our wheel is covered up and we have our polygon going into our media one, and you can use any of these masks you want for this, it doesn't matter. And then we're going to grab our planar tracker and holding shift like we talked about earlier, we're just going to drop it right in this line. Now, since we're at frame 118 where we started our track, our polygon is going through this planar transform and it's going to be adjusted to fit that tracking data. So if we go anywhere in here, it's tracked right onto that wheel, and if we go back to the beginning here, hit play, you can see it sticks right to that wheel. It's a pretty good track. I mean, a little bit of tweaking necessary, but for the most part, that did a pretty good job. And that is how you actually track a mask onto something inside of DaVinci Resolve. So I know this was kind of a weird one today, but if you want to see what the content is normally like, or if you just want to watch more Resolve content in general, I have some playlists and videos linked in the description down below. So until next time, enjoy your editing and have a good week.